You big boy. Nope. Hi, buddy. Feeling out the situation. Yep. Well, Rusty didn't seem to care no, uh -huh. at all. That's good. Yeah. I'm sure I'm glad I got three inches of mud on my shoe. That was great. Whoops, that was good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that would be part of course, anyway. So, let's, let's start. Hey, let's start with taking it into the holding area. Okay. And this is the proper way to enter the dog park. Mm -hmm. We're all serving safe. Yep. Is you want to come in here and now you want to release the leash. Oh. Yeah, you want to take him off of the leash. Because oh. <laughs> because one of the things that one of the things that happens at dog parties especially mm -hmm. is they um, we add tension to the situation. Right. By being concerned about the situation, we add right. tension to it. Yeah. So So just kind of sit back and observe, and then of course we have all of the safety that we need in place, and especially if, uh... But, you give the dogs time to get sniff, mm -hmm. while still behind, and we try, we try to uh, just interact as little as possible. Okay. Because the dogs will take care of the dogs. Mm -hmm. You know, like they, 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 they are social creatures. He's not without his socialization because he's got his own pack uh -huh. that he deals with. Can you walk in this minute? And uh good job, Rusty. Make sure you let everybody know. This fence is mine. Mm -hmm. whoa, 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 whoa. So you can see that Rusty is not having near as much of a a trouble. As, as he could, you know. Mm -hmm. so, you got it? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We are uh, taking our time in the little holding area. So if you would like, um, then we can go ahead and take him out and let you do your thing, and then we'll we'll come back. Alrighty, come here. You want to take them out? Yeah. Let's, okay. let's just do for just just to be extra just to be extra careful. Yeah. 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 No, no, we're not jumping on people. So he he doesn't seem to be having any issue with all the barking with that. I know. Yeah. He doesn't seem to be very tense. You can you can tell by the ears mm -hmm. um, where uh, a little bit of what their attitude is mm -hmm. the ears start going up now with you know with dogs with floppy ears it's a little different you got to actually look more at the oh yeah the joint here mm -hmm. you know right yeah. where that uh, because they get they they get up and they'll be up and forward but they still don't stand up like you'd get from like a healer or some uh, or a right. malinois or yeah. a shepherd or something like that um and so that makes a big difference in in how they come across but they'll be feeling the same way and they'll just look a lot more calm mm -hmm. um but he's not showing any signs he's keeping his ears back but they're not pinned back right and that's super important that we understand that they if, if they're pinned back uh -huh. that's 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 a problem yeah. but if they're just relaxed back yeah. Then, then you're, it's as good as you can ever ask for okay. in that situation. So, <clears throat> really, the situation that we have whenever we're introducing a dog to a dog park isn't about nerves. It's about you have to let the dogs do what the dogs do, and we can't sit there and micromanage it. Um, I mean, unless we have all of the controls in place, all of the um, unless the dog has all of the communication tools that mm -hmm. we that we would do with. You know, if I was working on a very long-term project like this, um, we would, you know, like we would have e-collars and, you know, and have the ability to and develop our words, you know, like we had talked about, you know, making right. sure that the nose, that they, that what no means mm -hmm. uh, is understood by the dog. Mm -hmm. And we get that by always saying no before we, you know, before we um, put any sort of correction in place or something like that, um, before they hit the end of the leash. So, you know, for instance, if I, if we were walking along and he were to be heading that way, I would say, nope. And then 
I would move back. And if he responds prior to me, if he responds to the no or the nope before he hits the end of the leash, then he gets away with it. I mean, like, and then mm -hmm. he doesn't need a correction because he's listening and paying attention. Right. So there's no disobedience there. Because we, we don't really want to teach with correction as much as we want to just enforce with correction. Mm -hmm. um, and then you don't end up having to correct very often. Right. But whenever they disregard us and they say, hey, I don't care what you want, I'm gonna do what I want, then, then we need to we, we need to let them understand that that's, you know, that that's the, mm -hmm. the, 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 that's the wrong answer, so. It is a beautiful day. Another thing too, I'm going to let you hold this one. Oh, okay. That one is mine, but... Uh, okay. And Dave, will you toss this into that trash can? Leave it little bug. Okay. I'm going to grab a stick for you. Just like we did when we were there, using this, if, if anything were to happen, if we, we don't expect that, you know, because it's very likely won't. First of all, I don't think the E is really fast enough to run and catch anybody that didn't want to. Most of the time, dogs are pretty good. Mm -hmm. But um, if something were to happen, stick for <coughs> in between. Not, you know, and, and of course, I'm going to take care of that now. Okay. But it also gives us the opportunity to very gently express to him some finer details mm -hmm. without having the tension of the leash. Now what we're probably going to do is we're probably going to let the leash drag if you're okay with that. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And that way that way we have just a little extra security if, if something were to happen. Right. Um, Here, rusty. Rusty. <clears throat> I got this on them. Yeah. And we were fighting in the car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh -oh. That's that's just noise. Okay. That's not. Uh, I mean, I know that does sound nasty. And um, now, whenever you have dogs that are under socialized, there's uh, there's the situation where he might misunderstand that. Right. So it's not something that we want to be too flippant about. Right. So let's just go ahead and go on in. Okay. He's he's very calm. And that's what we want to do first is we want to be calm. And then the first thing we want to do is we want to let this leash be nice and loose. We're not we're not trying to micromanage anything. We want to make sure that the leash is loose for today. Okay. And generally, you don't have leashes at all in dog parks, but this place doesn't seem to to have anything to say about that because you got to be able to get the dog from over there to to the gate. Right. But we're gonna we're just gonna keep keep nice and tight with him as far as like where he gets to hang out. He doesn't get to wander too far from us. And then we start moving. Because if we stop and we 
put ourselves in the position to be a stationary place, mm -hmm. then it establishes a territory that he gets to, oh. he gets to protect. Right. And that's not really his thing. He's not very, he's not very uh, territorial with you. He's not very possessive of you, as far as I can tell. No. But um, it's all the better. It's all the better to, uh, you know, to just go ahead and keep moving. We also have to stick for the sake of if, if he doesn't, if he's not dealing with things fairly well, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. then, then we can we can tell another dog to go away as well. And ninety nine percent of dogs respect the stick, whether they have any understanding of it or not, and it's mostly because they don't have any understanding. Right. You know, so it's a good tool to have. But so far he's looking real good. And as we have more space between us and other dogs, we let him wander around and start using his nose. An animal using their nose is a good thing. Okay. Because you get too scared, you don't smell anything. Right. I mean, like, notice it yourself. If you get in a situation where you're too stressed out, like, your, your sniffer doesn't really register mm -hmm. in your mind's eye mm -hmm. of what's going on. You don't sit there and smell a whole bunch of things. Unless it's a danger smell, mm -hmm. you, it doesn't happen. And what he's doing right now is he's sniffing all of the interesting smells. Right. And so you can't have interesting and terrified at the same time. Right. Those two attitudes don't coexist. So all we're really doing at this point is just kind of watching him to make sure that he... And, we're, and we want to let some interactions happen, but we don't want to force him. Right. We want to kind of let him happen at random. Mm -hmm. Not to mention his situation that he had a problem with was some dogs running up on him. Right. So we need to allow that to happen again. Within reason. You know, like we're like not 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 anything that's we're not trying to force it to happen in its most extreme fashion first. Right. We're wanting that we're wanting it to happen little bits at a time. Okay. For him to be able to continue to see that no, dogs are dogs are good. Mm -hmm. Dog dogs are friends, potentially. Not not all just enemies. And we use good. Nope. We use good energy. Ener good energy dogs. Nope. We use good energy dogs. Allow them to approach from the rear. And we just kind of keep moving. So that and give him the opportunity to have snips from different. Right. From different angles, uh -huh. and we continue to loosen up the loosen up the reins as much as we can. See, if he was thinking of this as a stressful situation, he would he would he would, he would be a lot more tense about that. Yeah, and yeah. he's not. He's doing right. great. Okay, good. Now. To a certain degree, as soon as we feel comfortable, we're like, we do want him to disengage from us. So I'm not trying to keep him in tight control. I'm not trying to keep him in tight obedience uh -huh. at this point in time, is I want him to become dog. Right. You know, I don't want him to be, I, I want him to leave this the realm, if he ever was in it today, which he doesn't seem to be, I want him to leave the realm of scared animal mm -hmm. and join the realm of dog. Mm -hmm. Because there's all sorts of wonderful things in the realm of dog all sorts of things that are enjoyable and and all of that 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 he can be a part of and um he just needs to make sure that he doesn't come into it a lot with a lot of fear because when a dog comes in with fear the other dogs will come over there and overwhelm him mm -hmm. because he's afraid right. his fear is a, is is not a healthy state it's not a state that produces good things so we want him to get nice and comfortable at the pace he can handle which is going great mm -hmm. you know and we just want to be here in case something goes wrong if something were to go wrong we have the leash for the moment and we have you know, the stick we need to get in between um but more than anything we just want to not worry about it too much mm -hmm. if, if if we sit here and 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 sit the, and keep our mind on i don't want my dog to get in a fight i don't want to get my dog mm -hmm. to get in a fight i don't want my dog to get in a fight then then that energy projects Right. I know, and that, that sounds a little, no, I you know, know. Yeah. but, but that, that energy projects and the dogs can sense it on us 
some 400 times better than we can sense it on ourselves. Mm -hmm. So really, we want to take our time, be around, because now we've entered the space. We've gotten to the point to where all these dogs are moving around, and he knows that they can all run up to him. Mm -hmm. Some of them have, it yeah. turned out good. So we just want to let those interactions happen. We want to try to avoid nose-to-nose -nose interactions right. until we feel really good about it. Okay. Now, side-to-side -side is not bad. Okay. You know, because you'll see dogs and they'll come in and then the one dog will put themselves right here. Mm -hmm. And... Nope. <laughs> you guys... Uh -oh. Nope. 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 So, when, when, when he has some anxiety about it, mm -hmm. we, we want... We want to let that produce correction. Okay. We don't want to spare him the correction in that situation. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of the people that are like, oh, we'll never correct a dog. It, it, you know, that, that that's why they don't make it. It takes them six years to rehab a dog mm -hmm. as opposed to six days or six weeks. You know, it's it that that's the idea. But um, because if he feels like, if he feels like I protested, and it worked out great, I scared the other dogs away, mm -hmm. then that is one conclusion that he can get. But whenever we, he looks at it from the perspective of, I started to try to scare the dogs away, and it caused me problem, and the dogs left anyway, that's a whole different feeling. Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and, it, and it's a whole different conclusion on how he feels like the you know like what he feels like he accomplished in the situation because we don't want him to feel like he can run off other dogs right and, a, and, a, and accomplish it right so so we just take our time and move around ton of super exciting stuff it, it, it's more about time in the presence of okay and that's that's what we really need to focus on um, when the situation comes up that something is coming in that could be an issue you notice that I'll grab a shorter leash right because if he decides to do anything he only gets that far and then the leash tightens and that's okay but we also want to make sure that the leash is not tight to start with Okay. We don't yeah. want to tell him when a dog approaches, I'm going to tighten the leash because then that says I'm nervous. Oh, okay. That's why these why these parks are by and large off leash uh -huh. is because that tension that tension becomes something that produces the the the, the bad incident mm -hmm. as opposed to keeps it. I mean, everybody thinks, oh, like I need to I need to make sure I need to make sure. That's that's the wrong attitude. Because as soon as you make try to make sure, then the dog goes, oh, something's wrong. There's a new dog in the area. I better go fix it. Oh, yeah. You know? And that's that's the that's exact opposite of what we want. So. <laughs> so let's watch his ears as he looks at this other dog. See how he feels about it. If he wants to wander up calmly, I'm not gonna be a, I'm not gonna have a problem with that. And I'm just going to keep myself in a position. And with the with the prong collar, it's not it's not hard to overpower a dog. You don't have to have a ton of strength. But um, we get to actually take a minute and look at the way his ears go. So if his ears go up too fast, you know, too far, that expresses certain things. Good boy. Hey. Oh, yeah. There you go. When you watch the energy of a dog like this, mm -hmm. that dog is not concerned. And that's great. Yeah. And I know that I just did exactly the thing that I said I was was not to do, you know, like mm -hmm. tightening up the leash and getting tense. Um, but he did handle it well. He did, yeah. 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 Um, I want him to understand that I'm still here, but I also took the opportunity to use the stick to block for him, to protect him. If I put something in between, if I was if I was standing here like this, this would be him, me telling him, I'm protecting you. Mm, okay. I, I'm protecting you from him. 
because okay. I'm facing him, you're, you're at my back. Yep. Um, same thing goes though with an implement. If I go in here and I want to, I want to do this, I don't actually have to be in between, but I place something that I'm in control of in between, and then the stick is now claiming this post, mm -hmm. or claiming Dave, or claiming. So you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And then these aren't great examples to see him react to it because he doesn't have that much interest in any of these things. Exactly. But um, the the claiming principle is ownership, and it's also protection. It can it can be received as both of those things. Mm -hmm. Is either I'm claiming it I'm claiming this because it's mine and you should not mess with it, or I'm claiming this is because it's mine and you shouldn't be concerned about it. Like, like you shouldn't be worried about it because I will take care of it and I will protect you or it either way, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the, that's the key. So let's, let's continue to chase around the other dogs, <laughs> you know, see, see if we can get some more. You've done it the wrong way, bud. Good boy. So. If we, see, if we see him, a dog that he can get along with, you know, that he can tolerate, mm -hmm. that's, that's, we can spend more time around that dog. Also, the other good thing about the dog parks, the good thing about the dog parks is it's very rare. And any dog is going to come into this situation and say, I've got enough gumption, I've got enough in me to take on all of these dogs. Oh you know, and, and so that doesn't happen. That's why dog parks are very healing for dogs is because they, they don't, they can't come in here and say, well, I'm, I'm so bad that, that I can, good boy. That's a good dog. No. That was interesting. He handled the dog coming up. Mm -hmm. And the dog turned and left, though. He, did you see that little micro movement that he did? Uh -huh. He kind of went like that. Now he caught the end of the leash as soon as that happened. Oh. And so that's, that, that was letting him know that that's not the right answer. Okay. But, um, I, I, I'm not... So when he's being when he's being calm, uh -huh. that's when we want to touch him. That's okay. when we want to pet him. Okay. Let him be calm in a situation. Mm -hmm. Now we don't pet him to calm him down. We pet him when he is calm mm -hmm. as a reward. Nope. Uh -oh. hey, that's enough. And when he's not, in moments such as that, we allow that to happen. Nope. Nope. Now he needs to be able to understand at some point in time that the, that the growling and the, the the growling and the excited play mm -hmm. is not a is not a bad thing. Right. Like that's just part of nature. As when you got big tough dogs, yeah, they play tough, and that's cool. And um, but it's not a threat because he just saw those two dogs fighting over the stick and everything, mm -hmm. and that was a playful game, and they and, and, and they dealt with it and nobody came nobody came out and had a bad situation so this gives him the opportunity to see how dogs outside of your pack behave okay so be careful not to I mean because what, what you got going on right now is this you're kind of you're kind of standing over him oh, looking yeah. at him and focusing so that's another thing that we can we can focus on that's another reason why the law keeping a little bit of motion is a good thing it's because it disengages it. because that right there yeah. and, and i know you didn't think about it that way and you weren't intending to do it but that's something that we watch because we subconsciously will project i'm worried about the dog 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 yeah. and and they see that and they feel that so that's another good reason why i'm holding him at this point okay it is because he doesn't he won't feel a whole lot of pressure to protect me because he doesn't have any, he doesn't have any relationship with him. Right. You know, and not, not a relationship of like, I'm his at all. You know, if anything, he would probably think that I'm in charge of, of things, but 
at the same point uh, we're not really even dealing with a ton of that but um like i don't mean anything to him mm -hmm. you know whereas if you did it he if if I, you get nervous he's he, he'll be more he'll be more apt to do something about it than if i get nervous right How is the um, the recall coming? Or is him coming back to you whenever you call him? But huh? still doesn't know. Um, what did we do with the 20 bird? So we can work on that and wait what we can do in a situation like this. We go find ourselves a nice empty part of park. Okay. And we go work on the recall. In the presence of other dogs, we, we can work on our obedience in the dog's heart just the same. And if we let a good long leash happen, then if I can even get it open. This one's, this one's tough. <laughs> All right. I swear he saved up enough to cover the whole park. Yeah, I'm sure. Might do a little trick if you get these things. Just put your, put your little clip in there and clip it around the thing and twist it. Uh -huh. As long as you don't need an umbrella or a spoonful of sugar, I think we'll be all right. <laughs> You're from the day. Oh. Rusty. Fit anything in this purse. So when we do that, we can start to transition okay. to a longer leash. I'm gonna let you hold this. This is right. yours. I hope yep. I didn't get any mud on it Oops. from my shoes. Oh no, sorry. There you go. And so this leash can be as long as we want or as short as we want. Mm -hmm. so what we want to do is we'll probably keep we'll probably pick up the pace a little bit and give him a little bit more space. Let him start to win the and this is the step that we take, this is like all the steps, the, the, the most agonizingly slow route to, to making sure that a dog is prepared and capable of handling a dog. Mm -hmm. And I don't see any bad signs from him much at all. Um, we had a little bit of a, we had a little bit of a situation where he got a little nippy with the one dog and then partly because that dog was being rude and he was coming in, pushing in, but And we just start to let him in a space that we can handle it. Just start mm -hmm. to let him. Oh, oh you got it. not on the leash, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's brand new. Uh, I think I think we skipped out on it. That might be might be a touch of juice. <laughs> it's the bags. No. So the good part about it is whenever we start to have a long leash like this, we don't necessarily have to hold on to it. We can start to let him feel like he's off leash. Okay. Because worst case scenario, I mean, like, say he wanted to, he saw a dog and he wanted to run out after it. I'll take it. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, he wanted to run after it and everything. So we got 20 foot of leash to step on. Oh my gosh, he's a big dog. He's so big and tough. <laughs> Well, everybody to know, this is my fence. Where did we leave it? Hopefully. Oh, no. There it is. It's poop again. <laughs> Don't put it out with your boots, Luke. <laughs> Don't tell me my business, Dave. Huh? Don't tell me my business, Dave. <laughs> are you are you following along with their reference? Yeah. Yeah. The old uh, Billy Madison. So we start to move on. Huh? Um, we start to be disengaging with the dog. Okay. Give him some time to move around. And we can do it in a corner, you know, in a bigger area, a more open area. Let him start getting some smells because he'll he'll rock, recognize that there's smells everywhere. And 
but but we still have the security of knowing that the dog is the dog is very catchable mm -hmm. you know and you, you can scale this up or down to whatever you feel comfortable with. okay because if, if it gets to the point where you don't feel comfortable but it's also to the dog looks more like a dog park experience because he's not under any sort of tension he's got his freedom to move around he gets to make some decisions on his own mm -hmm. and but at the same point in actuality we have enough control to if we see something coming farther away that we can calmly without putting a whole lot of extra energy into the situation just stop him and say hey no you're going to stick around me right and you don't need to get into that and then i mean if i needed to shorten the leash up boom i've done that right you know and then we can start to use our stick and start to guide with that and so we can always regain the control and that's the key is you don't want to you don't want to put yourself in a position where you can't regain the control but you also don't want to hang on to the control with your life yeah and and in, in that do you know like put extra pressure on the situation Rusty. so if we want to do recalls i mean it's pretty pretty simple stuff we want to figure out what our command is going to be for the recall okay and we just use the command first and then reel them in and if we have treats to uh to sweeten the pot mm -hmm. give a good reason to do it then that's great if we can use our body language to encourage it non-verbally mm -hmm. it's also a great thing rusty come so i usually use the word come and whenever i do i back away rusty come because animals do not want it. <laughs> this is not hot dog, man. So if that doesn't work, I mean, sometimes you use positive only uh -huh. in a, in, to teach an exercise. If you can't and you don't have a positive that they will work for in a situation, because right now his positive that he's receiving is the ability to wander around and sniff things mm -hmm. and be a dog. Right. So this is not that impressive to him in this particular moment. Mm -hmm. Now at home, where he knows all the smells and he's familiar and with everything when things are nice and calm nope when things are nice and calm then that then that this you know something like this might be a little bit more appealing mm -hmm. and so you can uh, you will train those things in those moments if you need to and then build up to where they can do it under excitement okay you know. mm -hmm. can't pet that dog So what are your what are your feelings on like w looking at him and reading his behavior? What do you what do you? Think? Well, I think he's doing pretty well. Um, I was afraid he was gonna, you know, when the dogs came up, I was afraid he was gonna go right after him. Can you see but how the moving? Yeah. The fact that we were moving made such a big difference. Yeah. Um, because he's got to keep up, and then the dog comes up sniffing from behind, mm -hmm. and which is perfectly fine. And uh, and then and so it gives him the chance to realize that a dog's going to come up and put snows on me, and it's not coming to hurt me. Right. There you go. Good job, All buddy. All right. Rusty, come. Good boy. If he doesn't want the treat, so if if he doesn't want the treat, and you still want to work on it, uh -huh. because we we need the command to be to be the command no matter what. Right. Um, and whether you have cookies and whether you have bribes or not. Rusty, come on. So we, first of all, back up and backing. Rusty, come. And if he decides to go a different way, I'm just going to keep moving. Rusty, come. Good boy. All right. That's good. And so you can use a pet. Mm -hmm. It's not as effective as treats, but sometimes in situations like that, you use what you can. Right. You know? Um, but you let the leash do the job. You use your motion to help him to where he doesn't need to hit the end of the leash continuously to learn this. Mm -hmm. But, Rusty, come. Good boy. All right. You can start encouraging him. Good boy. As soon as, as soon as he moves. But it's all about the move away from the dog to get him to move towards you. Rusty, come. Come. I don't worry about the leash getting tangled up. That's his problem. Nope. No. Come. Good boy. You don't care about them treats, do you? 
highly hot dog motivated. Repetition. Uh -huh. We want him to understand that when I say come, if you don't turn and start moving towards me, that there there is a correction in the future if you don't. You yeah. know, it's like you need to come to me. Mm -hmm. And um, and you continue to shorten up the leash. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't in that situation because I want to do the least, least amount that I can do that's still producing some results from him. Mm -hmm. But um, But if he doesn't, then I just go ahead and start reeling him in like a... What, what you looking at? Like a dogfish? No, I thought I saw blood in it. I guess it was just the way the sun was shining. Yeah, maybe. He hit his he hit his jaw on the dashboard. Yeah. You know, come. Might have gotten hurt. Come. Nope. Nope. Come. Good boy. There you go. So you see, as soon as he starts moving towards me, then I stop. Mm-hmm. Now, I, that's different than a lot of people. They try to say, hey, come, 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 and then they move at the dog. Yeah. That's, I mean, like, if you look at it from the perspective, the yeah. from the perspective of the dog, it's like, hey, come here, come here, come here, you know? <laughs> it's the, it, it's this, like, big, impressive thing moving at you, and dogs, mm -hmm. uh, animals in general, they move away from things that are moving towards them, and they move towards things that are moving away from them. So, if we want to get them to come, we just move away. Come. So he'll make he'll make the wrong decision. He'll say no. Come, Rusty. Come. And I just keep doing. It. Come. Yeah, there you go. So by the fact that there's a correction at the end of it, if he doesn't listen, now he's got 20 feet to listen. Right. Because he didn't. He didn't just accidentally make a mistake. He said no. I'm not going to and then I gave him plenty of time and plenty of encouragement to do it and to get it right and everything and then he found out that if he continues to say no then there's a correction at the end and so we do that and we do that with some patience not trying to be too impatient with him about that rusty 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 come come good boy good boy all right and then it, it's just the fact that him, if nothing else, it's the idea that it doesn't matter if they're being harsh with me. It doesn't matter if anything, whenever it comes down to it, if they say come, they will make me come no matter what. Mm -hmm. So we start with that until they get the understanding of what the word means okay. and everything. Uh, and then later on, we, we work on how fast it is, if that's something you, that you care about. Okay. When you start to l learn how to do that in the presence of distraction, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, so, that, so that they can do it even whenever things are exciting, mm -hmm. and then, but we step it up bits at a time. We don't get in too big of a hurry. We don't get to where we expect too much of the dog too fast. In order to be able to expect things quickly from a dog, I mean, like, if you can do that, if you can teach them just a little bit and then expect them to do the right thing, then you need to be a trainer, you know, <laughs> because that, because that's, that, you know, that's, that's the thing. Right. Uh, it, it takes them some time because they're not language speaking animals. They don't use their ears to, un, to decipher information as much as they use them to decipher threats and energy and mostly all negative stuff. So we don't want to get to where we're expecting them to. Rusty, come. Good boy. That's good. You know, where we're expecting too much of them too quickly because they are still just dogs. Right. Rusty, come. Good boy. Now you can do shorter leash so you don't have to go so far. But that's why I don't ever, you know, like that's why I don't put my hand in the loop right. or anything is because yeah. then that kind of relegates me to a certain amount of leash. Exactly. Come. Nope. Good boy. Nope. And so the ability to disregard other animals is a good thing. And uh, I think, uh, I'll be perfectly honest, I think that on this day, I have a little bit of extra nerves than I, than I typically do. So mm -hmm. I'm being a little jumpier than I should be <laughs> right now. Um, perhaps not too, not too much that it's gonna cause a problem, but if I can get myself calmer mm -hmm. in the situation, then I, we want to think about it a lot of times is the animal is borrowing our energy you know 
And so if I'm anxious about it, then he'll become anxious. Um, if I'm relaxed about things, then he will become relaxed. And so we want to continue. We want to continue to produce the energy we want our dog to have. Right. And that's that's a that's a really really good. If you don't think about anything else, if you don't take that's a that's a good takeaway from this situation. Is always do the best you can to produce the energy that you want your dog to have. So if those dogs are over there barking and growling and making a fuss and mm -hmm. being rowdy. Yep. If I get excited about it, he'll get excited. If I disregard it, he might not disregard it right away, but right. he will start to learn that it's not correct. Okay. So. When you get to a point where it's, where it's beneath the legs, a lot of times they just grab it from the collar. Especially when you have a good dog like Rusty, it's not, you don't have any problem with you. You don't have any problem with you grabbing up at a towel. You know, there are some dogs that, that haven't worked their way through that just yet. <laughs> so, um, <coughs> what I think we'll do is we'll go ahead and move. We'll go back out to the parking lot. I want to get that dog out of the car because I mean, it's not bad today, but it's still yeah, a little yeah. warm for him to be yep. in the car. Right. And uh, for any, any particular length of time. And then uh, I want I want to see you start handling this situation. We'll start outside under lots of control, okay. where we're not encouraged to where we're not encouraged to leave the dogs off leash and uh, just try your best to move around and be as calm as you can in the presence of other dogs and disregard them as much as possible. Okay. That'll be the, that'll be the beginning route for us. And eventually, a little mini Aussie. <laughs> Man, they're so fast. Those little mini Aussies, and they don't run out of energy ever. That's one of those things where I've, I've trained a whole bunch of mini Aussies, mm -hmm. and uh, people try to people try to um, exercise the energy out. Oh my goodness. And it's like, no. Forget it. <laughs> you're not going to get that accomplished, but if you give them mental exercise, mm -hmm. then they then they have a tendency to, they have a tendency to um, calm down right quick. Well, that's the end of side one. It's going to act up. When we have a dog, and especially a powerful dog, because this dog, this dog right here is like he's he's fairly powerful. The best the best way that we can deter them. Pretty sure that he's just a playful dog boy, and he just hasn't had a whole lot of opportunity. But we're still feeling that out yet. I don't want to, because he's because he's a moose. Like, wow. like he's a strong yeah, boy. Yeah. So um, when when we get to the point where we need to halt him, up is the answer. It takes less strength from us. Nope. It takes less strength from us, and it takes the grip of of the ground away from them, you know, or at least lessens it to the point to where we can stop the brain and get the brain to calm back down. Because that's the real big thing that we want to do. Okay. This is if we get into a situation where we're around other dogs and they can't be in close proximity, then what we want to do is, is we want to get them as much as close as they can handle and not have contact and then put them in the position to where they can they can be close to without and they can learn to calm the mind down in the presence of okay. the other dogs right. or the cat or the you know or the llama or apparently the the goats you know we got a call this morning about um not a dog that we train but the sibling to a dog that we train being uh killing one of the neighbors goats. Oh my. Yeah, and so that's unfortunate. And of course the dog that we trained had already had his incidences and so they're trying to get they're trying to uh the neighbors that he's goat it was he's trying to get them to get rid of both of the dogs. Oh and no. It's really frustrating yeah, because yeah. 
Rusty, the dog, and he's the one. I don't, I don't know if you get on Facebook or any of those things, but he's the one that he's the one that tried to attack me the other day. We got on video. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, well, the, the apparently the sister is a husky, and uh, and she is she she's happy with her predatory instinct and she likes to use it. You know, and, and a lot of times that's just for fun. And I mean, and. It's not their fault, but of course you can't let it keep happening. Nope. Right. Nope. 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 So whenever I have a situation like this where he is getting barky at something, mm -hmm. I put myself in between. Even if it's way over there, I still claim it. Okay. I say it's mine. Don't worry about that. I'm going to take care of that for you. And that's that's the the leadership that they want from us is they want to they want us to say no 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 I'll take care of that mm -hmm. I'm telling you that it's okay I get to make that decision and you need to respect it and so you can see that he d took the correction and then continued barking you know like it stopped him for a second because it wasn't really a correction as much as it was a uh, a distraction from the situation and but then whenever I actually stepped in between and said no that's mine then he then he understood the lesson and he quit you know quit a little bit you mm -hmm. know and now of course it's not going to be always when you have a, a dog that has a lot of drive towards something it's not you're not going to get rid of it with one claim you know but it's it, it it actually makes more of a psychological difference to the dog than the correction even does nope you can eventually do it depending on if the dog reacts to it you can eventually do it with the stick mm -hmm. put the stick in between and that'll, that'll be, and with Rusty, like you should have good luck with that pretty much right off the bat because Rusty respects the stick quite a bit. Uh -huh. um, this dog is a, a very pushy dog and, and we're fine with that. Like I don't mind that, but he, he is, he's never, he never understood that a stick is something to avoid, um. you know, and he's not one of those dogs that tries to avoid things that he doesn't like anyway. So it really isn't terribly effective to him yet <laughs> until we get to the point where we start being rude with the stick. We start pushing him around with the stick, and he gives space. And as soon as he gives space, I let up the pressure, and that's just a pressure game. What mm -hmm. kind of dog is he? I mean, he's a pit mix of some sort, but he's got something else in him because this is not a pit coat. Uh -huh. um, it's something longer, longer haired. Um, hmm. He's. I mean, I'm. I'm wondering if he might not be a little bit red healer, but I would think that the coat would separate a little bit mm -hmm. at the feet if he was a red healer because he's got a lot of that same temperament, you know, uh, that really drivey temperament. He's got a similar size. You know, you mix a, a healer with a with a pit bull, you might get something. Um, I think he's a Canis Muttus. Canis Muttus. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that's what we got. But so whenever we have dogs that, we have the opportunity to have dogs that don't, that, that don't know each other and feel uncomfortable, one of the good things that we can do is we can move together. Because once, when you travel in a pack, <coughs> when you travel together, you become a pack and you start you start getting to the point where you can you can understand that we are part of the same group. Whoever's in front leads the group. So we'll alternate between me doing it and you doing it. service dogs and stuff like that yeah. supposed to disregard everything right and they don't really they don't suffer a ton from it I mean like they can get under socialized but socialization is not knowing how to react how to act in close quarters with something it's knowing how to put up with normal things in life like other dogs are going to be normal other people are going to be normal right. and learning how to put up with them and to stand in the presence of them is more about what socializing is than you know than actually playing with now that doesn't go, you know, it's, it's to a degree, but 
it, it's it's not the it's not the final say on that particular topic, but it is an okay thing to have your dog just generally disregard things. We find out that whenever I go at something with an unreasonable energy, then that's that, that produces correction. If I sit there and I deal with it and I learn to ignore it and everything, my life always turns out fine. The only thing that makes my life not turn out fine is whenever my energy gets all messed up. Right. I have a whole bunch of bottles of water in the van. Okay. If you like, you can, you can move over that way and get some. All right. Um, we could also probably take him into the park, okay. let him drink out of the lake. Oh yeah, I could do that. Now I want, I will say, be very careful not to let him continue to lead you. Uh, yeah, I can. Psychologically, mm -hmm. a dog that walks in front thinks it's in charge of the situation. You see where when we have the fence we can we can let her guard down quite a bit more yeah because I mean I had the dog run up to us in the middle of the park and especially the way I seem to be today um, I don't know that I would have been able to give him the extra leash to say no it's okay mm -hmm. go investigate it. you know um, I didn't actually even introduce him completely to my own dog last night oh, okay. um, partially mostly because I didn't want to worry my wife you know she was you know she doesn't she doesn't she gets a little stirred up whenever things go poorly I mean and I understand that they have to go they have to be introduced mm -hmm. so um, we didn't we didn't take the time to do that just yet because I just got him yesterday and I want to make sure that everybody stays in the same pieces that they showed up in right. but um, and I wouldn't be that nor that nervous about it he just he, he's one of those dogs that has a pretty intense energy and in intention intensity has more of an ability to, to turn into something negative mm -hmm. if, if you're not careful, you know. Um, no, no, Amanda, no, 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 I know these guys. Yeah, hey, there's that <laughs> Malinois again. <laughs> yeah, his name's Max, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I remember. He's a cool dog. Hey. The Malinois actually was here the, the day when when we were gonna come here. Um, he, uh, he's a super cool dog, and he's got a great temperament. He's one of those hyper dominant dogs, mm -hmm. you know. And, and that, people think dominant is a bad thing. Dominant is not a bad thing at all. Dominant mm -hmm. is a very good thing in the long run if it's disciplined, mm -hmm. you know, because the dominant dog will get nervous a lot less easy, you know. Like him prior to getting attacked. Yeah. He was he was not. Good boy. And so when you have one of those dogs that isn't nervous themselves, they're you know especially whenever they're big kind of intense dogs. Mm -hmm. You know oh, he's it's just impressive as, as he comes. You know and and he's not he's not a soft looking dog. He's a, he's a very sharp uh -huh. presence. Yeah, right. And um but. He's confident and he's not, he has no animosity and he has no nervousness. And the nervous animal is the one that hurts you. So if you've got a big, impressive, even even nasty looking dog, but it produces, it, it prevents this nice, calm energy uh, the, of like, I'm, I'm not here to hurt anybody. I'm just here to have a good time. Then it helps dogs like these two mm -hmm. to calm down. Uh, 
see that. I don't, I don't know that those two even know each other. But the Malinois is just like, hey, this is this is an opportunity for more fun games, you know? And that's all he cares about. It's yep, like we're just having a good time. Going in the lake. <laughs> So, I know this is not super exciting. Oh no. You know, and, and I know that it's not one of those things that we see a ton of really fast progress. Right. Um, but that's, you know, that's part of the game whenever we're re-socializing. It's, mm -hmm. it's, about, it's about being being reasonable about things, taking our time, and trying our best not to be any more nervous than we need to. So I'm gonna lead ahead and kind of show you how I can how I would let these things happen with my own dog, you know. Um, and if we have the opportunity to get them in the presence, in the close presence of other dogs, then we want to do that. And the more I can loosen the leash, you notice that whenever I had the leash tight, when I had the leash tight, he became tense about Rusty a lot more. Yeah. I think he's mostly excited. But whenever I loosen up the leash, you notice he just it chills out about things. Mm -hmm. And that's always the case. You know, like that's the deal is that we end up adding more tension to the situation than the dogs usually ever do. When those things happen and you get the opportunity, again, put yourself in between or put the stick in between. A lot of times I let, I know it's, I know it's, you got to pay attention to where you're walking and everything like that. A lot of times I will, I will not try to contain the end of a 20 foot long leash. And you can go back at this, oh, well, point, that's true. At this point, you can go back and, and do that, but it gives me a little bit more ability to focus on the other two things that I have. Yeah. Um, so when, when he's getting into something and I come up to him and he doesn't respond, just be rude. Push right through him. And then he'll understand. Nope. Because all I need to do is get a reaction. I don't have to whop him to the point to where I hurt him in mm -hmm. order to ex express some dominance. It's like, I'm going to I'm going to make this happen. Right. You are trying to sniff at whatever this is right here. And I don't care that he does. But it's harmless if I tell him not to. Like it didn't hurt anything. Um, but if I tell him no, then I don't want him to do something, then I need to impress myself upon him mm -hmm. and I need to get him to give me some space. It's not about, it's not as much about, about pulling him away because that doesn't do anything. That's just dragging your dog along. Right. But if I can push him away, he has to decide to give some space and now he can continue to fight and push harder and get, and push, try to push through me. And then that would be him trying to say, no, I'm not letting you take this dominance. But if he gives me space, no. if he gives me space, then that's a conscious decision. Okay. You serious about calling him Scrappy? Yeah. I mean, if that's what you want to, then, then we'll, we'll call him Scrappy. And Rex is a good name, too. He does look like a Rex. He does, to me. Um, scra Scrappy I'll, Rex. I'll go ahead and start teaching him his name. And that's a, that's a good thing to do. We have, we're having the ability to get the attention of our dog at any point in time is one of the biggest steps in the direction of obedience. Because if we can call our dog's attention off of something mm -hmm. at any point in time, no matter how, no matter how, uh, huh. honestly, I think, I, I think I like your idea for a name better. Max or Rex? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's all right. I, he, I, he looks like it in the face. It's a little bit of an antithesis to what we're trying to accomplish because I certainly don't want the dog to think that he's the king, you know, which is what Rex means. But, uh. So when, when, when you're doing the leash, yeah. a lot of times, this is this is the way that I tend have a tendency to do it. This is all if I'm if I want if I generally walk the dog on my left, which is the case for me, it could be the case for you, is I'll actually hold the leash with my right. Mm -hmm. Like this will be actually where I grab it and hold on to it. And then I use my left 
to control. So I can do the same thing even with the stick. I can hold this right here. And then if I need to shorten up the leash, mm -hmm. so he can have this much leash all the time. And if I want to just hold him with my right, he can have that much leash. But if all of a sudden I need to shorten it up, I just grab a hold where my hands are and then I pull them together. Oh, okay. And then that way you don't end up, because I saw you a minute ago when you were doing this number. Yeah. Which puts you way off balance. It's the, it's the better, better way to get pulled over, you know, especially if the dog heads. But if I instead go like this, now my tension is going to the outside mm -hmm. as opposed to as opposed to to the inside or as opposed to me leaning out my my tension is pushing away from me and it's a lot easier to hold my stance in that and I can adjust quickly the length of the leash oh, okay. you know what I mean yeah. and so then I but I still have my static point where he can have plenty of space but if I need to and I need to shorten him up Boom, you see how quickly I, I got that accomplished? Right. But then my, my, my center of gravity is still nice and close to me, and, and it's low, so that I, that I don't have to worry about getting pulled over. And I also have this, this short leash, it's not tight, but short, to where if he does something, I go straight up with it. And if you get, you get used to holding that right amount of leash, and you can make it as short or as long as you want, but we, we go like this, and then if I need to, all of a sudden, have a hold of him tight, hands together, run my hand down the leash, and then here I am. Yeah, so maybe a little bit less, like like choke up, yeah, there you go. And then you have the ability to get right close to the neck quickly, and the dog can't pull you over if you're going up. Because mm -hmm. if you're going up, even if he's pulling out that way, most of the force is going straight down, which keeps you on your feet, <clears throat> you know? And that's just, I mean, like, and this isn't good stuff to, to say to anybody. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that you're particularly unstable or anything like that. No, no. But that, but that I mean, even for me, because I deal with some dogs that are 110 pounds and you gotta be able mm -hmm. to keep control of them. And if they decide to go after something, you need to have the right, you know, you need to have the right leverage point, you know? And so this right here is a great way to do it. And then I just let the rest of the leash drag. Mm -hmm. trying my best not to worry about it too much and then i can watch the dog and give right, him a little on the right. Come. give him a little bit more opportunity a little bit more opportunity to interact without losing my control but he's also not feeling me doing this number and adding tension to the situation mm -hmm. and i can start giving him the opportunity to, to follow along That was rusty. No, rusty's <laughs> trying to get me to slow down. Notice I didn't give to it. Yeah. I'll let dogs tell me to do that. There you go. <laughs> no, rusty. Walk, walk. So, nothing super fancy. It's just the extra opportunity. So let's let's get them close to each other. I'll get a short leash here, we have a short leash there, that's it. And we want to start giving them the opportunity to be a little closer to each other okay. Rusty. without having any sort of situation. Rusty, nope. sit, sit. So, so you Good. see, Good. I'm holding this thing. Uh -huh. This is my anchor point right here. He's got more than enough leash to get to Rusty. Right. Now he, do now he doesn't have anywhere close to the amount. And mm -hmm. I can adjust that super quick and I get in the habit of I get in the habit of. Do little dogs like this are fantastic because first of all they're not threatening. Like for whenever you're trying to socialize a dog, they're not threatening, and he's mostly just bravado, mm -hmm. or she rather. I, I'm pretty sure that that's female. Um, she's mostly just bravado, but she's very mouthy, and she's very. <laughs> you know, she's doing this thing all the time. Nope. And um, so you can let them do the nose-to-nose -nose thing through the fence. You still want to be careful because it, even though it's, there's a fence there, the dog still could nip a nose mm -hmm. or something like that. We don't want that to happen. Right. But we do want them to have the interaction. And we want them to see that the interaction turns out fine. So, um, and that makes a big difference. Uh, 
that's why it, that's why it dipped out from the situation. It's just that that was a great opportunity mm -hmm. to. And then that's the other thing is is whenever you're dealing with a dog that is having any sort of anxiety about other something in particular, right? This type, this circumstance, it's actually just dogs. Um, what we want to do is we want to continue to lead them toward. Mm -hmm. You know, because if I am leading you toward the thing that you're anxious about, and I'm doing it with proper leaderly posture and things of that nature, then that then that tells the dog that I'm not concerned about that thing. Like, why well, I'm trying to achieve closeness to this thing, mm -hmm. and that they, and and how much of that they understand, I don't know. It the results the results say that they are understanding it to a degree. You know, with all of the time that I've spent mm -hmm. doing working with dogs that have aggression issues, uh, because they, you know, like the dogs, the dogs feel differently about it whenever I'm dragging them towards the thing that they're trying to get to go away. Yeah. You know, then they're just like, oh, well, apparently that's not what we want. You know, and they do think we. You know, like they're they're just like, oh no, this is my dude, this is my, <laughs> this is my mom, and we are a oh. unit. We're a team. Yeah, and she's. You, we just want to make sure that, that you are the leader of the team. Uh -huh. And that I'm, you know, and that I'm the leader of the team, and the dog's not because they don't have the brain power to be able to make the good decisions, right? As much as we do, they have great instinct, which can be just as effective a lot of the times, but they can't rationalize it mm. until they've just experienced it. So we need to we need to step them up. We need to step them up according to our judgment, not theirs. And they they and so if they feel like they're in charge, then they mm -hmm. disregard our judgment altogether. Um, so that's how where the the dominance factor is super important to socializing a dog is you need to be able to stop them and tell them that they've made the wrong decision. Nope. Nope. I think Rusty needs a drink. He looks yeah. uh, pretty oh, hot. I'm sorry. We totally went over there. To... Yeah, he's wearing out. I... Yeah, well, he's got that coat. <laughs> Pardon? Like this has been a good, oh yeah, a good scenario. Yeah. And it's been good instruction. And uh, it might it might not be the end of it. <laughs> hey. Hold on. No. No. Sit. No. Sit. 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 I like your border collie. I like your border collie. Yeah. That's a border collie for you. Yes. Yeah. It is smart, too smart, and very stubborn. Yes. Oh yeah. I tell, I tell people all the time, border collars sometimes are the smartest, like 16, 17 year old kids. You know, yeah. very often. And he's very stubborn. Yeah. He wants to play his game, <coughs> not <coughs> my right. game. Right. <coughs> right. Yeah. What do you think, Rex? It's very interesting watching him, and I'm just talking to you about it because we're here. Um, but. Uh, that dog that dog's not that dog's not aggressive. No. He just no. he he's just a rough player. No. Border Collie's going to tell him what his boundaries are. Mm -hmm. Watch the way that, well, it's, I mean, it's over. Yeah. That's yeah. how effective it is, as the Border Collie said. I ain't backing I'm down. I'm backing down from you. <laughs> I'm gonna let you get in my space because I'm confident, but see, him? see that? That's good socialization. It's like that dog is. So those run bys mm -hmm. happen at the park, and, and you can, and they're great because that's a nerve challenge right there. Yeah. And so the puppy, the, 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 the black, the, that kind of brownish dog is, uh, is, is trying to, is, is trying to, um, institute some play. Right. And he just is not, he's a little too puppy. Right. For the, for the border collie to be. Good boy.
So, do you have any do you have any questions that you want to make sure that I address while we're uh, while we're still together this time? No, um, I can't think of anything. Let me just see. I'll work with him a little bit, see if I get the hang of it. Right. And then uh, I guess we'll just go from there. Yeah. Oh. Uh, anything rusty? So the tenants of this process is you want to make sure that we're we're trying to prevent the puncture. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, what we're doing is so we're trying to get ourselves all the way up. We're trying to allow things all the way up to the situation of the puncture. Mm -hmm. um, dogs using their body to communicate to each other is not necessarily a wrong thing i mean like that little border oh, yeah, collie over right. there yeah. just totally nipped at another dog mm -hmm. and that dog was not doing anything improper he was saying whippersnapper you need to, <laughs> you need to calm down you need to be <laughs> respectful of my space mm -hmm. and that's that's you know and that's perfectly fine yeah um we want to keep escalation from happening but we really want to make sure that as much happens as we can stomach you know, and that's really where, that's where the battle is. The battle is our nerves. Right. And we are actively going into situations that we know that the dog finds less than comfortable. Now, we're not trying to overwhelm them all at once. We're trying to step it up slowly. Um, that's why we can be outside mm -hmm. of the park, and that's perfectly fine. And um, the, uh, that's why we stand in the presence of and let him pass by and everything and let him continuously see that these animals come around and they don't they don't ruin my day they don't attack me and so we have to dispel this myth in their mind that the animals animals coming around are here to attack right you know um, when they have that bad situation what happens is, is they change their, their the way that they handle it and they have a tendency to keep themselves away from it and by keeping themselves away from it the last event that happened that involved extra dogs was negative negative. and then every event that happens past that they bring the the animal we're talking about brings the negativity themselves so mm -hmm. the event continues to be negative right. and we need to we need to say hey i'm going to let you get all the way up there i'm going to let you bring your negativity i'm going to give you the feedback that says this is the wrong answer and i'm not running away I'm staying right here. We're mm -hmm. gonna we're we're going to calmly exist in this thing until you can leave calmly. Because a lot of times what the problem is is when that fight happens, you know, especially if that fight happens at a dog park, people say, Get your dog out of here. And then whoever's got the dog that is taking it the farthest, which is not always the one that's in the wrong, is taking it the farthest, they pick them up and they run them out of there, and the dog goes from nine or ten level excitement. Mm-hmm to out of the park so their excitement got them away from the the uncomfortable mm -hmm. their posturing their aggressiveness all of that stuff solved their problem what we want to do is we want to put them in the position where they try to solve their own problem mm -hmm. we say no don't do that right. and i'm going to solve the problem and teach you what the right solution is is by we just sit here and endure it and it doesn't it doesn't end up hurting us and then after that they get to the point where they start to loosen themselves up and they say okay well i've been through this before and they're not gonna let me they're not gonna let me do it myself mm -hmm. so i just need to follow what mom's doing and then they start letting dogs sniff and then eventually they get they get to the point where they start getting interested mm -hmm. and then they get to the point where they go over and start investigating things and then and then at that point they're they're reintegrated and then they'll go and they'll have their playtime. and a lot of times when you have those real bouncy puppy like dogs mm -hmm. putting them around uh, a dog that is unsocialized will be a good thing for them because they'll learn that the that they can see through the behavior that the that the puppy is not aggressive they're just rude and they learn to deal with the rude to start with and mm -hmm. so they learn to deal with people in their space oh, gotcha. and without having to bite at them. yeah you know and then and those things keep progressing and progressing and progressing as we go forward until the dog uh just recognizes that uh, a puppy or a younger dog or a bouncy dog as something mm -hmm. nope as something 
something to play with, not something to be worried about. Rusty. Come. Good. Pretty good boy, Rusty. Man, it really is warm today, man. I'm oh, I just know. blown away by it. I know, and he's, like I said, he's wore out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is it a golden doodle? Yeah. Yeah. Who's? He's two years old. Right. Wow. They, the doodles are a phenomenon these days in my line of work because they grow so fast. And they get all of the tall that the poodle gets, but they, they don't stick with the daintiness that the poodle has. Mm -hmm. You know, poodles are like birds. They, it's almost like they got hollow bones. They don't weigh anything. Wow. Even though they're big dogs, uh -huh. you know, they don't weigh anything. And so they're very soft natured and everything like that. But then you add a golden retriever, which is built like this, mm -hmm. to the situation. And now all of a sudden you've got all that fast growth and then you end up with density as well. Yeah. And now you just got these big gigantic dogs and they're like full grown. It's like if I was this big when I was six, mm -hmm. you know? I had no discipline, no respect, right, no right. self-control, but I weigh 270 pounds. And, you know, <laughs> not that I weigh that right now, but, you know, I've been there before. And and so that's that's what happens with the doodles. I get called on all the time. Mm. So. Well, I guess we call a day. Yeah, I mean, I hope you feel satisfied with it. I, yeah, I, yeah. I know that it's not, this is it, not a... No, it's going to take time. Say bye, Rusty. Say bye. Ha, 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 ha.